And what about you? 2010 Volvo XC90. There's a couple of these have appeared on the channel. This is the uh, this is a manual one. There's an automatic one appears on the channel as well. And this one is in today. Customer complaint. No handbrake. So this one has 285,000 miles on it, more or less. And uh, these handbrakes, well, they're operated with your foot. So that's really a parking brake as such. And you, you release it up there. So it works on shoes that are integrated inside the disc. So it's, a, it's very similar to the Mercedes ones. But uh, this guy has owned this car from new and he tells me that the handbrake has never been any good. And in actual fact, it's first MOT when it's four years old in this country, uh, it failed on the lack of parking brake or handbrake. So he tells me then that every year, whenever, whenever he takes it in to get it serviced, he has to get the handbrake adjusted for just to get it through the MOT. And it just about passes Brake and balances are poor, but it just about passes, and about a month after that, it's back to where it was again. It's rubbish. So before we brought it in onto the ramp, we took it out to uh, verify the customer complaint, as we like to do, just to see how bad this actually is. So let's see, we're on an incline. That's... So we're down the hill. Maybe you can see that. And uh, we'll put the handbrake on as much as we can. Right, that's about as far as I can go. Right, so we'll lift off the foot brake now. Oh, he's not wrong. It's rubbish. So based on what the customer has told us, we're expecting this to be adjusted within an inch of its life. And in here, uh, underneath the console, is the adjuster. So it's hidden under there, that's it there. And uh, I have the seat here hoofed up a wee bit, but that's really just so I can uh, film it better for you, you know? So this is the adjuster, and as you can see, this bit here, is extended a right bit and this groove here there's supposed to be a circlip there and it's not present here it's not there and what's happened is whether well, what they've done this bit here is called the socket and they've turned that you know away from the circlip that's supposed to sit beside the circlip uh, you know to stop it from de-adjusting itself so they've spun this right up to pull this up to extend the outer sheath as much as possible you know, which in turn then makes the, the inner cable shorter as such. So that's that's what uh, has been going on here. They've been trying to pull this cable as, as much as possible. So what I want to do is I want to unadjust it because, you know, if, if these shoes are being pulled by this cable, then, you know, I'm going to struggle to get the, you know, the discs stroke drums off. So that's what we're going to do. And I found the easiest way to do that is well what you're supposed to do is this socket is rotate it towards yourself so, so clockwise you know so this way but it's for, it's pretty difficult to get to do it's an there's a nerdle thing there you're supposed to grip so what i find works best is 13 mil spanner on here on the back of it and actually you know turn that the other way anti-clockwise which is the same effect so what we're trying to do then is make this bit you know, go down towards the circlip, or where the circlip should be, the circlip groove, and you know, maybe over it as well, and uh, that'll take that'll take a bit of tension off this cable. You can see as I'm doing that with the spanner, it's uh, spinning the uh, the outer there behind us towards the equalizer. Now the other thing is that I don't want to 
loosen this too much because what can happen is the two handbrake cables there that are going to the back wheels can pop off the equalizer so, uh, so we're starting to get her loosened up rightly now so we'll just keep at that but i don't want to loosen it too much that the thing is completely slack and uh if uh, those pop off the equalizer then might have to take a, start taking a console out to get them back together again so we can just about get a view of the equalizer below the uh below the below the seat here so it's just starting to loosen up rightly so we'll just bring her in beyond the uh circlip groove you can feel it loosening up so hopefully that'll be enough just to get her just to get our drums off that's all i'm really interested in but we'll need we'll need to come back to this whenever we're finished so our drum comb disc is removed the calipers hanging up over there but this this these shoes are the parking brake and uh this linkage here is what widens these out you know and that's pulled by the cable in behind here so uh we had an offer release on the cable there to get these drums off and uh, that was fine if I hadn't have done that, we would have really struggled to get the drum drums off, drum stroke discs, because you know there's a, there's a wee bit of a lip in them. Uh, we'll have a wee look at that in a minute. So, so our calibers hanging up over there, which is what the foot brake operates onto the disc with uh, with ordinary pads. So, but the biggest thing about this is there's no point in just replacing all this or or doing whatever, because it's still not going to work. Because remember. This, the, these parking brakes, the, you know, they don't operate correctly or very efficiently, even when they're new. So the problem is this bar. So it's this thing here. So there's no way of actually adjusting the shoes. And the only way people were doing on this car anyway was by pulling on the cable to try and, you know, get these shoes so that they would, they would uh, come in contact with the inside of the drum. So this is what we need to address this thing here this doesn't work so these are discs anyway and uh, it's this surface here that I'm interested in so there's quite a lip on here and the surface isn't too good in there so not reusing them so what can we do about that so this is that H bar if you want to call it that and that one's out of the other side that uh, I've already dismantled. So we'll have a few bits here from Volvo. And basically what it is, is an adjuster that we are going to put in place of this H bar. Now, <laughs> it's a wee bit bizarre because, you know, if you buy that, it, it's, it's there's only one of it. And, uh, you know, you obviously have to buy another one. And bizarrely as well, you know it's incomplete so you have to buy these wee bits which come in a pack of two and uh yeah so that's no good without those and then we're just going to replace all the springs as well so there's enough in that to do both sides and the other thing as well and i have it on good authority i'm not 100 percent sure why but everybody says including the guys in volvo that i spoke to do not use aftermarket brake shoes they do not work on this occasion i'll put up here all these part numbers that you need and the reason why i'm going to do that is because the guy in volvo the guy in the parts department i says to him do you want the chassis number do you want the registration or whatever and he said uh, no because it won't come up that part number won't come up for this vehicle because those weren't fitted to this vehicle so you need to give me the part number now these the other thing as well is these are available in the aftermarket and i don't recommend aftermarket ones of these either either because they're they're ill-fitting as well because these have a, like a rounded profile on the end there and the aftermarket ones do not so they're not really that expensive you know they're about eight or nine pound each but you need to buy two of them and then you need to buy two of those so it does add up a wee bit 
and those are about twice the price as aftermarket ones but you know apparently the aftermarket ones don't work as i've said so this part number uh here i have cross-referenced that part number to look to see what well what is this actually fitted to then because it's not fitted to an xc90 and what came up was a volvo 850 from the 90s Well, that certainly raised their profile a bit, uh, running the state cars around the touring car championship. But unfortunately, they were trashed by this lot, the Alphas. The Alphas just blew them away. So, Gabrielli Tarquini, Sun Pilot. So, a few wee things that I do for removing these brake shoes. And the brake shoes in general, you know, not just these parking brake shoes. So, you see people struggling, I see people struggling, you know, trying to release these springs. And, uh, you know, you're in behind a hob and all that nonsense. So there are tools available, you know, the like of this here, that holds the bottom of the shoe and it catches the spring and, you know, you can get it to pull down. And they're actually sort of too big for these wee small brake shoes, this particular tool. And there's other tools you can get the likes of that for pulling on springs and all. But what the problem is, is whenever you start pulling in that spring to release it, you know, this shoe then will want to move. It'll, it'll try and uh, move out of the way on you. So you want to stop that from happening. So what I do, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody ever doing this. So again, this is my invention. So a couple of Jubilee clips, join the R, and uh, we'll strap it. And that just prevents it all the whole assembly from moving yeah and uh, I just put uh, a set of part nose visors on there and you maybe could see that so I'll spin it spin the camera around so you can see so get them on there and that's it We'll do the same with this one. So this job is taking a slightly different direction. So whenever I took the retainer springs off the uh, backing plates here, I discovered that there weren't actually these parts were detached and uh, they're they're just all rotten so i tried riveting one of them here and uh well wasn't happy with it because the, the quality of the metal isn't as poor so it's severely degraded unfortunately that led into other problems so the the back plates in this uh assembly this hub are held on with these four of these bolts here so they're a 13 mil head with a an m6 shank and these three here come out no problem because they're closed holes but this one here at the back is open there's a slot here in the back of it and uh, you know all the elements can get in there and despite putting heat and everything else onto this on the casting and on the head of the bolt both sides this wee boy here snapped so I had to start drilling uh, this one here I had to re-tap and the other one I managed to get out with an extractor. So in order to get that drilled, I had to take the hub off. So we did remove the hub. I did remove the hub with uh, you know gentle sort of means. So I'm happy enough to reuse this hub. So, you know, it's just one of those jobs that has uh, escalated a wee bit. So I wasn't happy, you can maybe see this, I don't know if it'll come up on camera here or not, but the shoe itself, you know, it was sort of kiltered over a bit because it wasn't being held in with the retainer correctly. And uh, you can see it, it's been wearing uh, on the side of it there a wee bit. So, 
for the sake of longevity, I've decided to, well, do a bit of extra work. So we're all reassembled and we'll have our new adjuster mechanism in, instead of this uh, solid bar. So we've greased uh, the threads here and stuff like that. And we'll have our band on so we're ready to put the springs in. So we can uh, adjust it to one of the wheel holes here. I'm gonna end the view there. So you can put a screwdriver there and just uh, turn it. Whenever you put the disc or drum on, disc stroke drum, and, uh, but I'm gonna just, I have calipers, so I'm gonna measure this in comparison to the drum. So we can set a measurement here. And we can, There's a couple of mil there to go. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so this is a wee bit stiff there. It didn't need an awful lot of adjustment that. So if we compare the links here to our H bar to what we've replaced it with, we can see our adjuster is a good bit smaller, but uh, it only took a couple of turns. But you know, we'll have to remember with a new jaw mom, with, a, with new uh, shoes on, with new friction material and stuff. So the other wee thing you may notice there, I had uh, a couple of wheel bolts there when you're doing that we test it either have the wheel on or make sure the drum is, is properly attached don't rely on that wee 10 mil bolt to hold the drum on so it needs to be it needs to be clamped to the hub or the wheel burn whatever you want to call it so yeah but it does give you room for maneuver in the future a sweet modification so once our car back together again we'll have adjusters in each wheel but we'll still have the cable adjuster now, this is uh, readily available on the internet. So you just type in Volvo handbrake cable adjuster mechanism PDF and you'll get this. But this, I've checked this to the, the Volvo OE workshop uh, information and it's, it's, that's where it's taken from. So, you know, it shows us here, uh, loosening the thing off, to take the star clip out and uh, screw cl socket clockwise so that uh, clip emerges, install the clip and then adjustment. So it's a wee bit confusing this here because you know it sort of doesn't say that this comes after that but yeah that loosens it up that allows this piece here to move then with this loose and then you screw it back put the clip in and that's sort of that's clamping this down again and then what you do is you praise this out, you widen this out, and it sort of ratchets back. So a lot of people find this very sort of convoluted, and it's not great, I must confess, it's a bit crap. But nevertheless, I'll, I'll briefly describe, hopefully, maybe give you a wee bit more insight in how this actually works. So the, tr the secret is, is this bit here. This isn't threaded, the socket's threaded, but this bit is rifled, so it's just straight cuts. And inside here, there's collets. So what you're doing whenever you're loosening that off, it works exactly the same as this die grinder. So if you imagine if this bit here was rifled, so you know, there's serrations in it, and the collets are rifled as well. 
So that's stuck in there. And what you're doing is you're loosening it off. So you're widening the collets out by, by loosening it. And then that allows that, that, that just goes loose then. So it's collets, similar to that sort of thing there. Only they're, they're rifled inside as well, you know. So you're, you're doing the exact same thing, only like that. And then, so whenever that's loosened, that's allowed to move about. And then you, you take it back down to where the clip is, install the clip, and it, you have it against the clip, and all that is for so that that doesn't rotate with vibration of the car. It can't loosen off itself then. And then you put something in there. I normally use uh, a couple of spanners, you know, different thicknesses of heads of spanners, whatever you have, and you get that in there, and you click, 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 click it out, click it out, and extend it out as, as far as you can. And that's basically it. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, our new pads, there's a few wee things on them. This video isn't about how to change brake shoes or change brake pads. So it's it's more about introducing more uh, adjustment mechanisms into this, into these Volvo, because they're, they're very poor. Uh, they're not a great design and they don't really work. But uh, this, this one here I thought was interesting. It was in our pad box. So there's a uh, clap. Clean thoroughly, lubricate properly. Accessories must be replaced. Please allow 200 kilometers for bedding in. Yeah, mm, very good. Suratec grease applied there. And of course, do not use copper paste. So we're back in the car. And we can see from the last time, this part here, is loose because we'll have that screwed in um we make sure that the uh the cables are still hooked in behind us there so anyway what we'll do is we need to screw this uh until we can see the groove for the clip so we'll go back the way that we had that we were doing originally until we can see the groove. So there we go, there's the groove and uh, we need to install the clip. So there was, a, there was no clip in this uh, thing, so we had to buy another one. So there's it there. Get that clip in. Like so. And what we need to do now is uh, click the, the uh, handbrake come foot brake in one click. So now that we've done that, we need to expand this. So we need to get something in here and praise this out. And we'll start to hear it clicking. So a couple of spanners. Make that do the jab. That's about it. Right, so let's see. Bend a wee bit. All right, so if I remember, we had it in just a one notch. So I'll get you back here again. Let's see what that like. Yeah, it's a lot freer. So off camera, I made a, another couple of wee changes there. I screwed the socket till back down again. 
it was only like half a turn, so it touched the sour clip. So that's so it doesn't, you know, loosen up itself. And then over here, I was able to actually get three spanners in. Uh, I got another spanner in between the two, and uh, I put a, a larger one towards the socket, a 13 mil or a 12 mil or something, and then a couple of 10 mils, and uh, had a look through my 10 mils to see what thicknesses of heads that were on it, and different ones, you know, and then clicked it out, and that's where we ended up. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Just another wee thing, uh, you're probably, to get at this, you're probably better uh, lifting, uh, unbolting the seat and uh, pushing it back towards the back seat. You have basically no room with the seat in it. So here we are, back on our test hill. More or less the same position. So after our adjustments, let's have a wee look see and see what the difference is. So let's have a go with this. One, two, three, four, five. That's about it. So, foot brake off. And we're still here. So, right, that's a fast improvement. We're still putting some force in this uh, pedal to get it to hold. Oh, got another click there. So, yeah. We are stationary. Jobs are good. So what about wraps this one up? Okay, many thanks for watching as ever. Maybe you got something out of it. You know, a few wee tips there maybe, you know, here and there. But uh, all the best and 